Alright, welcome to another single Jedi battle. This time we have the Joseon Koreans against the Ching Bannerman army. I'm playing against Pompey the Flatulent. He's a very strong Field of Glory 2 player. I think he only dabbles in these other games. Um, but yeah, we'll dive right in. The Ching Bannerman have a strong mounted archer component, including lights. They get very effective missile infantry and have access to a couple units at least of impact foot and an extensive artillery line. So I'll want to grab the few light cavalry I can, although the Korean light cavalry do not have swordsman ability, so they will be outclassed against the Qing cavalry. Um, our infantry have a lot of half heavy weapon, which means half shooting ability, full melee ability, uh, but heavy weapon has no POA versus mounted in single Jedi, so they will be a little bit squishable. To make up for that, I'm going to bring some light artillery and Ooh, that's expensive. Is that even worth it? I think a swarm of infantry backed by a little bit of mediocre cavalry might be the way to go here. It's a bit pricey. We'll avoid that. Now, these are all half shooting effect troops. They're not going to be that good at shooting. I'm kind of debating whether I should drop the bows and just go all in on the matchlock then. Or grab a couple of full units of bow. That might be worth it. They're very cheap. That is a great virtue. Or I could get more cavalry. Could even get one unit of decent cavalry. Maybe that would be worth it. Okay. It's coming together. Lots of completely terrible infantry. Very good. So we'll just try to move up into range and start blasting with cannon fire, and then try to move in close and engage with our matchlocks, and hopefully not get crushed too badly by his impact foot. It could be that I'm making a mistake and I should be investing more in full missile troops, but with a lot of the Chinese infantry, they have the light sphere ability on defensive impact, but if we get into melee, they'll have zero POA and we'll have a hundred. So I think it's worth the risk of getting shot up a bit or disrupted by impact from cavalry if we can just try to force a general along the line infantry engagement. Right, deployment. Forest fighting will be good for us if we can get in there quickly, which I think we can. Um, with that in mind, I think we'll want our light horse on the right wing, along with our artillery. Good non-light horse will also need to be on the right, I believe. There's plenty of rough ground and forest here to protect our infantry from cavalry assault. All right, now we need to decide who pushes into the woods and who fights in the open. Do we have any, yes. 
So it's a full on unit of matchlock men. We'll put them in this little forest here to protect them from cavalry. Units with light guns, I believe I will want in the open part of the fighting. Just because disordered units won't fight so well. And the light guns offer a defensive impact, which again, we'll need more in the forest. Um, this unit has no heavy weapon, it's raw, so we'll have it advance alongside the cavalry. Raw bow units as well will have just advance behind the artillery. Alright, bow plus light guns can fight against cavalry in the open, theoretically. A lot of raw units in the Korean army, but we'll have to use them and just hope you don't get some kind of insane chain route. Alright, basic plan either seize this forest or seize this slope and this rough ground. Artillery forward, cavalry right with some shooting infantry support. Now overall our strategy is going to depend on what kind of army he brings more than anything. If he goes cavalry heavy, um, we'll probably be playing a little bit more defensively. If he goes infantry heavy, we can attack all along the line. Right, let's see that deployment. Same sort of deal, cavalry over here, infantry here. Looks like he's gone for a somewhat more expensive bunch of infantry. So we have more men, but worse men. We got superior cavalry armored. More and more and more. Okay, so this is all armored and superior cavalry for infantry. Let's see, raw and average shooting foot and general depth impact foot. A couple of subpar skirmishers and one light bannerman. So we kind of waited onto our left and looks like. It's not going to be of much use to us unless we can hold out. So get our light guns forward. These narrows are going to be useful. We'll try to push our light cavalry into this open area here. If they need to, they can fall back through the wood. I don't want my cavalry getting too far ahead of infantry support. And this infantry will start turning right soon. Right. We're going to lose units here, and hopefully, our raw units don't panic right away. Next turn. Need to try to stay out of bow 
range until we can make contact on a wider scale. Good. And we'll get these reinforcements down that way. While a few others occupy this forest. And that'll do for now. Next turn. If we're going to fight Impact Foot, uh, the forest is where we want to do it. And we'll keep extending our line downwards. We'll shift some cavalry towards the center in case things should get out of hand. And the others can remain slightly in reserve here. Next turn, our lights can begin some harassment. Next turn. How unfortunate, I'll we'll have to pull them back. All right, so now he's in bow range, so we are gonna be forced to push up or fall back.
I'm gonna order this unit to take cover in the wood. Fall back. And then next turn we might have to begin a push, but I can at least do it with a slightly wider frontage. It's able to fire there because they're on a lower elevation, so you could shoot down, I believe. Yeah. So we can't turn to face, which means what? Ah, reduce CC. Very good. Vikram, we're going to have to suffer some more disruption on our push in. Okay, so Next turn, then, we'll have to advance. Next turn. It's odd, the, when you play a Korean army versus a Japanese army, you play very defensively and missile oriented, but against a Chinese army, you have to play aggressive and melee oriented. Hmm, you set it up nicely so that in order to advance and fire, I need to expose myself. It's rather unpleasant. The 
this cavalry is going to be a huge problem. So is that. If only I could charge this unit, but I can't, and instead if I move I'll get shot to bits, but if I fire I'll also get shot to bits because my men are raw and only half armed with missiles. Well, raw or not, we have to move. So, they get light guns and better quality, so we're at minus 75 on impact, but in melee, we're at plus 90 for heavy weapon, 100 troop quality, minus 25 because we're raw, and then overlappers for a larger unit of heavy weapon, so we're going to try for it. Good. Also good. Thanks, some arrows. Guess we don't need to. Also good. All right, so this is the best part of the field for us so far. His cavalry are superior. So. I'll send the non-general up unit forward. Hopefully they'll evade, and then if they charge, we're at least dis disordered, so we'll both be disordered. Or if they pursue pass, maybe we can get a flank attack in. Now, this is still going to be quite hideous. Next turn when they fire, that is. It's unfortunate that this unit is locked behind. It's one of my best infantry units. Average, match lock, heavy weapon, and light guns. So I suppose they'll fill in whatever gap opens up. Probably here. It's important to disrupt them because they have swords, but we do not. Get out of the way a bit. That's it. So it's going to be really dangerous when this cavalry charges. And we're getting shot up quite badly here. But this is good. If we can push an advantage here, it could go well. All right. Next turn. Everyone held firm. That's something. No, that's also something. Ouch. Held firm for whatever that's worth.
Do we hold? Do for the moment. It's going to be rough. So, let's see here. It's not our priority charge target, but we can slip past and then hit them in the flank. Although I should have fired first, but that's okay. Force them to evade. Then charge. Very good. We fired. It's quite all right. It's now. We'll also charge. We'll have to endure one more volley, and then we can charge there as well. Good. And charge. Unfortunate. Ah. If only we hadn't disrupted on impact. We would have been fine. Don't want to break, but I do want to get better troops into position. Think about that. In the meantime, <laughs> okay. Fire and charge. Get in there. They held firm then. So this unit has got to be ready for breakthroughs. Hmm. It's all looking rather bad. Yeah, this is bad. This is good. This is okay. This is fairly ugly and bad. This is good-ish. So, it's all very much in the balance for now. Uh, hard to say, you know, when I play Chinese-style armies, I usually sink most of my points into infantry. Um, it's a slightly tougher call against the Koreans because the Korean infantry is pretty squishy against cavalry, at least on impact. But cavalry is expensive. Unfortunate, but if we frag them before impact, it won't matter. Uh, 
Yeah, this whole wing is going to, I think, flee this turn. So I don't know what he's talking about regretting when he's up 15 points. Might be more than 15 points actually at the end of this. Well, that was not pretty. I don't know why I'm bothering. We're just both wasting time here. This is hideous, this unit's gonna break and spread panic. We can at least first do something useful. Or not, they held firm. Lock them in so they can't flank right away. Unfortunate. Yeah, this army is showing off its inherent squishiness right now. If only they'd held firm. Well, we'll give up this unit and take out some artillery, getting them killed. Now, I don't know why Pompey is complaining. I'm pretty sure he's got this in the bag. Our infantry is too brittle. Too many of them are raw. Unless we get rallies. But barring that, goodbye. At least they held firm for now. Even so, they're likely to lose. Hmm. How disastrous. So I messed up the audio for this turn, so I will just have to talk over the muted turn. It's not the same, I know, I apologize. But basically at this point, the squishiness of my infantry is being made pretty clear. Um, all of my infantry is raw and average. That's why it's so cheap, but that's why it's cascading. Uh, Pompey also cunningly hid a unit in the forest to get behind me. And then one thing to note here is that um, medium foot cannot charge cavalry in single Jedi. So my men just rushed past. And of course, another problem is that only impact and determined foot um, cannot be fallen back from. And all of the Korean infantry in this army list, at least, is medium foot. 
So a Chinese foot that lose a round of melee can fall back and then pour in a volley with their superior firepower. I lucked out with this evasion. Yeah, so both of those units are trapped in pursuit mode, so they're just going to get flanked and totally wrecked. And Pompey really played me well, um, neutralizing my light cavalry down there. Uh, the light cavalry is one of the main strengths of the Korean list, and a lot of the Chinese lists can't get any light cavalry, but unfortunately the uh, Jurchen and Qing lists do have access to actually better light cavalry than the Koreans, because theirs have swordsmen and ours do not. So yeah, now we can move and get shot, or turn, fire, and get shot. So I turn and fire, and it's not going to be pretty. So that was a 12 to 32. So I think in general it takes two units of these half missile units to cause a cohesion check. But with stationary firing, the 20% bonus, you can do it with only one unit. And there we have it. Next turn, so Pompey asks, is putting trash infantry behind artillery and letting protected artillery take the charge of viable tactic? It seems that protected artillery almost do a better job in melee than some of the infantry types around. Well, so protected artillery are never really going to win on melee, but they can uh, endure for a while, and they do exert a zone of control. So if you're willing to uh, have the points of an infantry unit used for that, it can be useful. In fact, it's probably something I should try doing more often. I believe Pompey will win this turn uh, with the flanks he has set up and the uh, disruption states of my units. We'll get a flank there as well, and that should be game. Yep, that's game. Well done. So I think overall I made a mistake of army composition. I think I was too confident in the abilities of my infantry in melee, and I should have invested more in 100% um, shooting capability infantry and more in superior cavalry 
either to countercharge his cavalry or to charge his infantry. The difficulty being Chinese infantry do have 100 POA on impact against charging cavalry, whereas my Korean infantry have zero as heavy weapon troops. So yeah, I've always considered um, the Korean army better than the Japanese army, and I'd always considered it evenly matched with the Chinese army. Maybe I'll have to try a rematch. Part of it's also is that the um, mid Imjin War Korean army gets access to uh, warrior monks who are uh, warriors, bow, impact foot, swordsmen. Very good units that we don't have here, so that could be part of it as well. So, very well done to Pompey. I know he doesn't play this game very frequently, so good game, and till next time.